Hi there guys and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel, I'm James, I'm Adam And we're here today to preview the Sheffield Wednesday game which is coming up for you guys um, On Saturday obviously we were at home to Sheffield Wednesday after that 5-0 drought we had against uh, Fulham Which we uh, won't mention <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're here today to give you guys the preview for the Fulham game, uh, Fulham game for the Sheffield Wednesday game, which is upcoming. Obviously, it's a championship playoff, really, fixture. It's third versus sixth at the moment, and there's a pretty big tie, really, in the championship. And um, it's annoying because it's not really getting the recognition it deserves this game, because obviously there's games like Leeds versus Brighton and Birmingham versus Newcastle coming up this week. But uh, this one's I feel like, is up there with some of the big ties this week. Um, obviously, key men for Sheffield Wednesday, obviously, we do this now at yeah. the start, obviously, have a look at who is uh, danger men, really, for Sheffield Wednesday. Fernando Forrest. Thierry is uh, probably the danger man for them, but he's actually suspended for this game, obviously picked up a red card against Preston. How big is that for Reading? Yeah, massive. Um, he has, last year, he was, call, he was causing us all problems, wasn't he? Um, you know, we were, we were all we were a stake, basically, when he was playing against us. But um, uh, positive is for us, so we've got Liam Moore back, so hopefully he can deal with him. Um, unless... Well, he's not going to be playing because he's suspended. Liam Moore? Forrest Thierry is... Oh. Oh. Got a red card. I thought he said Liam Moff, you know, I was thinking, not again. Nah, Forrest Gary's got a red card, hasn't he? So he's but, not going to be playing. Yeah, that's alright then. Um, Gary Hooper, though, probably someone else to look out for. Obviously, Nui. No, I'm joking, not knowing you. Um, uh, Adam Reach, I think, is someone who plays for him as well. Uh, he's quite a decent player, obviously, from Middlesbrough. Um, but yeah, apart from that's really it. Um, obviously, they've got Kieran Westwood in goal. Yeah. Decent goalkeeper, but um, yeah, should we go into our team yeah. predictions, who we think are going to start? So in goal for it, then we'll go Vanny Al Habsi, obviously had a pretty poor game against Fulham, which uh, obviously conceded five goals. But uh, we'll forget about that, and obviously we'll stick him at the back. Yeah, Ali Habsi, you know, first choice goalkeeper, can't go wrong. Let's just forget about Fulham, and yeah. Uh, in the defensive back five, back three kind of thing, I'm going to go Tyler Blackett, Liam Moore, Paul McShane at the back three. It worked for us before, obviously before more suspension, we need more back in that defensive partnership. Yeah. I don't feel like Blackett should be dropped because of that game, he was kind of left on his own in that left side because Jordan O'Bee was nowhere. Um, so yeah, we'll have them for it in the back. Yeah, again, I'm going to go review the same. Um, you know, fantastic, they've been playing. It's a shame we didn't have Liam Moore for Fulham, massive, massive impact for the squad. It shows what he's, you know, what he means to the team and, you know, the impact he's brought it's, to the defence is just fantastic. So back, back, back. Uh, left wing back and right wing back Jordan Abita and Chris Gunter. I feel like these two wing backs are more attacking thinking than defensively. Mm -hmm. That's why we have the back three there. And I feel like having them two pushing forward will help us in this game and it helps us most weeks really. Yeah, um, I'm going to go the exact same as well. Chris Gunner against Fulham. Don't know what he was doing, man. I don't know what he was doing. Um, obviously, he went straight back down to your books, did he? <laughs> out of them but uh, beat a uh, poor game against Fulham don't know what he's going to get done he got done every time Fulham just having on on the wing Fulham just having a fantastic day field yeah. day <laughs> but yeah it's fantastic but, um, yeah I'm going to give them two anyway um, fingers yeah. crossed Obita can pull it out in this yeah uh, the midfield quartet or oh, for three I don't even know I was trying to use a fancy word and I'm not going to do that again uh, the midfield three I'm going to go with uh, George Evans I'm going to go with Joe Vandenberg I'm going to go with Roy Behrens Yapstam has said that Liam Moore is going to replace Williams um, so obviously that probably means Joey's going to keep his place in the side which I don't know how I feel about because I don't know if, if he is going to be fully fit yet because obviously he clearly wasn't fully fit um, I really did take note about Joey not clapping the fans as well when he left the pitch um, on Saturday, which really did go down in my books. Um, obviously, I used to be a massive Joey fan. Still, I'm a massive Joey fan, but the fact that he didn't bother to clap the fans off when he came off, which is a bit disrespectful, the same with Yaku Mete, didn't bother to clap the fans after you just embarrassed them, 4,000 of them, turned out to watch a 5-0 loss. It's something you need to do, uh, come over and clap us, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to go with them too, and obviously Roy Beerens, I feel like he's a better Roma than he is a winger, which obviously we were really able to see against Fulham. I mean, he was on the floor 90% of the time <laughs> on the wing, so yeah, I'd rather see him in that Roman position. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with that, same as well. Um, Joe, no one had a really good game, did they? No one did. Um, Joe no tried. At some points he did have a few positives when he bulldozed uh, like one minute of the game. He gave three kicks away, so... You know, no one had a good game. Obviously, Joey Walker not clapping the fans really affected you, um, as you could tell by the uh, experience afterwards. At the end, God, you ripped in. Joey, get back! And in the podcast as well, you did not. You were, you were showing, obviously, the others that you were unhappy. And, um, yeah, that's what you want to see, though, you know, travelling. You want to see, you know, fans' appreciation, and uh, players' appreciation for fans. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to have that same through as well. 
Uh, going into the two strikers, then obviously Gareth McCurry and Dominic Samuel want to seem to back up top. I don't want to see Dom isolated on his own, which we saw on Saturday. Obviously, I feel like he works better with someone to work off of. Um, yeah, I just feel like him and McCurry up top have been a decent partnership so far this season. I feel like they can carry that on. Yeah, got to go that as well. Um, it, Dominic Samuel was so lost up front by himself. He had no support at all. It's just not what he's suited to. Um, McCurry up there, he has someone, you know... They play well with each other, and you know, that's not going to stick them up to them too up front. Off the bench, uh, people we could come and see. Liam Kelly obviously is an option. Uh, I'm still going to keep saying that every week. Dennis Rackles, if he's fit, please come on, Rackles, come back. I want to see you in that team. Mate on yeah, Mate, obviously, Mr. No Clap fans. Um, <laughs> yeah, just any of them players really I wouldn't mind seeing. Um, score prediction then, I'm going to go with a 2 1 win to Reading. I feel like they're going to try and bounce back Reading. I feel like we need something to prove, obviously, after that 5-0 loss, and they're going to come back and they're going to want to play better, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, I'm going to feel like they want to play for the fans. So I'm going to go with a 2-1 win to Reading, and I'm going to go with... Don't say Paul Shane or Liam. Roy Beer is the score. I'm going to go with a... Well, 2-0 Reading. Um, I feel like, I know, I feel like we're going to bounce back. Um, we'll see... We can't let the Fulham game ruin our season again like last season. We can't let it happen. Um, I feel like Kiat Sands had talked to him over the week. You know, drill, so, drill yeah. them in the head. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go with 2 0. Uh, first goal scorer, I'm going to go with Gareth McCleary. Finally, right written out of 10, what are you going to go for? Uh, I'm going to go for uh, an 8. I'm going to say 8. Um, not just not quite up there, but uh, I think you know, we're playing alright. I think you know we're going to try really, really hard. Um, we're going to put all the effort in, obviously, trying to get back into the wins. And yeah, I'm going to go over 8.59. Because obviously, if you come back and win a game against a sixth place side after losing 5 0, it's absolutely fantastic. But the thing is, we're in a third place. So we need to be. Yeah. Not need to be winning these games, but we need to be getting a point or a win if we want to really challenge. Um, so yeah. Go we were, we were very lucky with the results. Um, obviously, when we lost 5 0, we were so lucky the results around us. Um, yeah, Birmingham lost. Mm. Brighton only drew. Newcastle lost. Um, Leeds have obviously climbed up to fourth now, but they're still three points behind us. Um, yeah, we're really lucky. Yeah. Um, with that, but yeah, I mean, if we want to go after people like Scott Hogan in January, who we've been linked with, which is a massive move if we can go for him. Obviously, already ten goals in the championship, ten eleven in the ready in the championship. Um, we need to be getting points to win these games. So I really feel like we mm. need to prove that we are a force in this yeah. league this year. We want to challenge for something. So. By doing that and then getting Scott Hogan in, we could really massively change our season around. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Um, well, well, the fortune's not season. Yeah, we need to, you know, bring, we need to bring in some big names. We need to bring in goal scorers as well. Goal scorers as well, like obviously we've been linked with um, Scott Hogan. That'd just be fantastic if we got him, wouldn't it? He's quick. Get Hulk yeah. Now. <laughs> uh, he's quick, you know, if you need. But, um, yeah, that's it, really. Yeah, I mean, nice to see Hulk Hogan sporting his son down the days. <laughs> um, no, that's going to be it for the video guys, hope you all enjoyed, obviously leave your uh, team sheet down in the prediction down below and uh, what do you think about the Scott, H Scott, Hogan, Scott Hogan move in January, would you, like, Scott, would you guys like to see him come in January, do you think it's realistic or not and uh, what price tag do you reckon we'll uh, spend on him, so mm -hmm. well, yeah thank you very much for watching guys, obviously I've been James I've been Adam. and we'll see you guys in the next video, peace.